All right, so here we're gonna demonstrate how to run regression analyses in SPSS. Uh, for this video, I'm only focusing on the bivariate analyses. So uh, this is the same data we used in the previous videos in the set. So I've got the midterm grades and final exam grades for a sample of 20 students from my graduate methods course. And whenever you're running a bivariate analysis, I just think it's useful to start with a scatter plot. So here I'm gonna go to graphs and chart builder, and I'm going to put the midterm grades on the x-axis and the final exam grades on the y-axis. Uh, once again, I want to know if uh, midterm grades are a good predictor or regressor of final exam grades. Uh, once I have those set in Chart Builder, I can click OK, and that's going to bring up my scatter plot that we've seen in the previous slide where it looks like there's a positive relationship uh, between midterm grades and final exam grades. Now, one of the interesting things you can do in SPSS is if you have a bivariate regression, you can actually get the regression estimates right from the scatter plot. So to do that, you can hover over the center of the graph and double click. And when you center over the center of the graph and double click, it brings up SPSS's chart editor. Uh, from here, you can do a lot of things like change the titles, ch uh, change the label on the axes. Uh, but what's really interesting is um, kind of on this row, right above the actual graph. You can see a couple of little diagrams here. And what I wanna do is I wanna hover over this option that says add fit line at uh, total. And if you click this option, add fit line, it gives you some options to basically add the regression line. Uh, once again, we're only focusing on linear regression, so by default, the fit method is linear. And uh, just by simply opening the box and having that linear selected, it will put that line on the chart for you. So if I close this and then I close the chart editor, you can see that my graph has been replaced with one that has that regression line on top of it, which is uh, y equals 1.05 plus 0 0.98 times x. And this is the relationship that we saw depicted in the first video in this series that talked about linear modeling. Now note here that we normally write the equation as y equals beta x plus alpha. When SPSS gives you this line, it writes it as y equals alpha plus beta times x. Same information, slightly different order, just the way this program handles the reporting of those estimates. Uh, so once again, this is actually our regression line that is reported right on top of our graph. So if you're doing a bivariate analysis and you want to include that analysis in your paper, in your presentation, um, it's probably just easier to use the graph editor uh, to include that regression line right on top of your data points. Uh, of course, this doesn't allow you to do some of the more uh, sophisticated things with linear regression, like do predictions or determine errors. So to run a, a regression analysis proper in SPSS, we're going to go up to Analyze, Regression, and once again, we're doing linear regression, so we're gonna go to Regression Linear. Uh, note here, we're gonna select the linear option, not the automatic linear modeling. Uh, we're going to check linear, and that brings up this dialog box that asks us to list the dependent variables and the independent variables. Uh, you can also do other things by selection or case, which we're not going to cover in this class. So here we want to uh, model the dependent variable, the final exam grades, as a function of the midterm grades. And uh, you can do a couple of things that, that will kind of are important for our analyses here. Uh, under the save option, it brings up the linear regression save menu. And here you have a couple options to save different variables that are produced by the regression. So the one thing that you know will be interested in saving that we've talked about are the unstandardized predicted values. Uh, the unstandardized predicted values are the y hats given the regression analysis. So for every value of x that appears in our data, we can have SPSS report back for us the predicted value of y given that x and the regression line. Uh, we can also ask for the unstandardized residuals, which is the difference between our prediction of y and the actual value of y in our data. And I'll kind of illustrate those and how they look in SPSS in a moment. So let's ask for our predicted uh, unstandardized values and our uh, unstandardized residual values and click continue and OK. Uh, now you'll notice here that in SPSS, when you get your regression results, you get a bunch of different tables uh, and kind of walk through the tables here. Um, the first table basically just tells you what you've done. So the first table says that we have used the final exam as our dependent variable and we've used the midterm as our independent variable. 
Now, if you have multiple independent variables and for one reason or another, one of those variables is dropped by the system, uh, that would come under variables removed. But here we have a midterm variable and we have a dependent variable and the B subnote tells us that all requested variables were entered. Uh, the second table is our model summary table. This produces our value of R squared, uh, which is literally R squared. So we have our value of R, 0.764. That's our Pearson's R value uh, that we kind of looked at earlier in the semester. Uh, and then we get our R squared value. Now keep in mind that R only really makes sense the way we talked about it if you're doing a bivariate continuous continuous relationship. Uh, R squared is a general measure of model fit, so how well does our independent variable explain our dependent variable? R squared ranging from 0 to 1.0. Uh, and then we have adjusted R squared, which is a measure uh, that takes into account how many variables we've included, because the more variables you include generally increases the R squared value, so this penalizes R squared for a number of independent variables. So the real meat of the regression analysis, uh, so to speak, appears in the coefficient table. Uh, the coefficient table ha has, uh, in our model, two lines. Uh, the first line or the first row represents the y-intercept, which is called the constant uh, in SPSS. And then you have your variable that you've entered, which is midterm. Uh, if you're ever in question of if you order, enter the variables in the right order, it'll say then A, uh, with the subnote or footnote, dependent variable is the final exam. So here, looking at the rows, our first column are our actual estimates of those values. So where it says unstandardized coefficient for beta, uh, for the constant, this is actually our estimate of the y-intercept or alpha. So 1.049 is our y-intercept, and then our slope for our variable midterm is 0.984. So you can draw or write the regression line entirely from the first column in the coefficient table. Uh, so final exam is equal to 1.049 plus 0.984 times midterm. And this is exactly the same thing we basically saw at the two decimal places in the regression line on top of our graph, 1.05, right? Keep in mind here that that's just rounded up from 1.049 is equal to 0 0.98 times x, which is the same thing we got here, rounding down to 0.98. To do the t-test for our uh, slope coefficient, and keep in mind there also is a t-test for the y-intercept, we can divide our uh, unstandardized coefficient by the standard error of the coefficient, and that produces t. So 1.049 divided by 17.384, uh, will give us then a t of 0 0.06. A beta of 0.984 divided by a standard error of 0.196 will give us a t-score of 5.025. So uh, once again, the same rules apply as we did with difference of means for t-scores. We're going to check the t-scores probability of being drawn from a distribution that assumes that the slope coefficient and y-intercept are zero, and we get that significance level or probability. Uh, once again, keep in mind that to be statistically significant, the significance level needs to be 0.05 or lower at the 95% confidence level. So looking then at the constant line for our y-intercept, we can see that even though we got an uh, estimate of 1.049, the t-score is very small, meaning that the probability the null hypothesis is true is very high. In other words, we're finding in our analysis here that the 1.049 estimate for the constant is not statistically different than our assumption that the constant would be zero. So even though we did get a one value uh, statistically indistinguishable from zero, we would fail to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the y-intercept for this model is zero. Turning to the uh, sort of variable midterm, we have a 0.984. Uh, this tells us that uh, the every one unit increase in midterm percentage points will lead to a 0.984 increase in final exam points. Uh, that's basically one-to-one -one in my mind. Uh, so we have a one-to-one -one value here, and we can see here with our significance level that it is far below the 0.05 threshold. So we conclude that midterms are a statistically significant predictor of final exam grades. Uh, the final table here, 
is that a residual statistics table, and this tells us the predicted values range from 70 to 0.89 with a maximum 97.4. These are our y-hat values. There's a mean value and a standard deviation value. Uh, then it also gives you the values for the errors or the residuals, which is the difference between these predicted values and the actual values. Uh, the one final thing that I'll point out here uh, is that there's a standardized coefficient beta in the coefficient table. Uh, standardized coefficients, if you have multiple variables, uh, scale them all the same way so you can directly compare the effects of each variable against the other variables. Uh, given we're not going to be looking at uh, models with multiple variables in this class, uh, we're not really going to focus a lot on the standardized coefficients. Uh, and they're not really popularly used in political science or public administration research anyway. So whenever you report out, always report out the unstandardized coefficients. All right, so uh, let's take a look then at what we've gotten for our uh, data results. Uh, so we ran our model, which is that final exam scores are equal to uh, 1.05 plus uh, 0.98 times the midterm score. So uh, that's what the PRE underscore one is. This is our prediction. PRE stands for prediction. So for the first person, based on their midterm score, uh, we would predict that they would get an 84.658 on the final exam. And you can see here that the residual error is negative 4.65. Uh, basically, if we take uh, their actual final exam grade 80, subtract the prediction, we get the error. So we mispredicted student number one by 4.65 points. Uh, for person number two, that person got an 89 on the midterm. Uh, they got a 90 on the final. Our prediction was 88.59. We were off by 1.4 points. For person three, we saw that they got a 92 on the midterm. They got an 86 on the final. We predicted a score of 91.5 on the final exam. And that person got a, uh, a difference between what we predicted of 86 and 91 of negative 5.5. And you, of course, go down the list. And that's basically then uh, how the predictions and residuals are calculated. Uh, so you can see here that, you know, you know we, we're not perfect with our model, that midterm scores do an okay job, but not a perfect job at predicting final exam scores. Uh, you can see here, once again, that the maximum error is a 9.78 point error. So you get a feel from here how well your model's performing at prediction uh, and how useful those results may be to talk about students that are outside of the sample.